Welcome to A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic week wherever you are in this planet of ours as we head towards the the festive season and I think the most exciting time of the year. Some people say, oh, I dread Christmas, there's too much to do and too many parties and too many whatevers. Well, where's your Christmas spirit? It's time to sort of get amongst it all and I think it's a time for sort of great hope and the opportunity to sort of dream big and, and pray for a miracle or whatever the case may be. I mean, we've had a tough couple of years. So isn't it time to have something to look forward to? Let your hair down a little bit, have some fun. If you get the opportunity to catch up with family and friends that you haven't seen in a long time, enjoy and in savour the moment because we never know what's around the corner with this pandemic. It seems to be sort of shifting and playing a game of I don't know what with us now you know we think we get on top of it and then bingo along comes another variant and we're all back into sort of uncertain times again so I think we really do need to savor and treasure every single moment that we get with the people that we truly care about and it's it's even more magical this year I think because I think there's been so many families that have been isolated from one another for such a long time to be able to to be reunited reconnected and to really appreciate what we were taking for granted. I think that's the message that's come out of COVID. Anyway, the Simply Tarot card of the week this week is the Wheel of Fortune. Now, the Wheel of Fortune is one of my favourite cards, not just because it's an elevation in money, but more importantly, because it's the card of completion phases. Now, I, I find this a refreshing card to have coming out now that we've been in this pandemic for nearly two years that sort of maybe we're coming to some sort of completion with this maybe we're finally starting to get a handle on it maybe we're going to find some sort of answers to be able to nip this in the bud I was reading just before the show that they're talking about this becoming sort of like a seasonal illness like the the flu wouldn't that be a, a blessing if that was the way that COVID ended up being because we all eventually found a way of coping and living with influenza or the flu as it's known. So if we could get to that sort of point, I think the world would be in a much better place than it is. But anyway, on a positive note, this is the wheel of fortune. So this can mean elevation in money. Now, for some people, that might be that you're working overtime, you're working extra hours, so, of course, there's extra money coming in. And for many of us, that means extra money going out the door too. But I, I want to look at this in a positive way that we've all come to a point in our lives where we've done our very, very best, that we are able to look back and say, I've completed many, many tasks. I've been able to manage to do the things that I needed to do to bring my life to this point. Now, I feel that this is a very important card at this time of the year as we're coming towards the end of the year. If we feel that we've achieved the tasks that we set out to do in 2021, well, then a packet of gold stars to you. It's really, really important. So we're going to move on to the astrology section. And for those of you that might be tuning into us on the radio section of this show, you can always... Um, find me on Facebook under Amanda Hall Psychic. That's the easiest way if you want to drop me an inbox message or something like that and sort of tell me how you're enjoying the show. So that's for people that aren't actually physically watching it on the video stream, but there's many people that listen to it on their podcasts. So this week we're talking about astrology as we do every week and I have a little trip around the universe to tell you what's actually sort of happening. And this is to not to break down the 12 signs, but this is a generalised astrology report that is for each and every sign. It's, it's more about collectively as a group, this is what we can be facing or what we can be experiencing now and for the next seven days. So the sun's still currently in Sagittarius, which is my favourite time of the year. And it's wonderful to have the sun in there because I think it makes everybody sort of get a little bit of hope. It's like, you know, all of a sudden we're all caught up in the Christmas carols and the shopping and the eating and the visiting of people and the, the busyness of the year and many people sort of stop and take time to play some Christmas carols or watch a, a Christmas movie or two. And I think that that reignites our our faith in that, you know, there is some good things happening in the world. So we've got to really sort of embrace this time because, you know, it's it's drawing to an end. The Capricorn time will kick in around about the 22nd, 23rd of this month. So we really want to enjoy these last few days of the Sagittarian energy. Now, we have the planet Mars, the planet of the unusual, the unexpected, the planet that drives us, the planet that makes us get out of bed of a morning, has just moved into Sagittarius in the last couple of days. So if you've been feeling this sudden surge of 
extra energy and you didn't know where it came from or all of a sudden you're starting to find that you're opening your mouth and speaking your mind a little bit more and you think, oh, I shouldn't have said that. You can blame Mars for that because Mars is the planet of action. Not that I'm saying Mars really governs anything that comes out of our mouths, but I find sometimes when you you have a planet like Mars that's just slipped into the, the sign of Sag, it really takes on that Sagittarian energy. And Sagittarians are affectionately known for foot and mouth disease. They speak first and think later. So if you're having that little bit of a Sagittarian problem and you might be a Pisces or a Gemini or a Capricorn, that's why it will settle down in the next couple of days. But, you know, sometimes I find that it's just, we're just speaking the truth too. That, you know, the truth just happened to fall out of our mouths and we think, oh, maybe I could have said that a little bit better. Oh, well, bad luck, we've said it now. So sometimes that's the sort of way things need to be in our lives as well so we have mercury the planet of communication is actually sitting in capricorn now this is really important because with mercury sitting in capricorn it's sort of in a it's in an earth sign but it's also in a sign that's a little bit slower than the sagittarian energy so it should be you know we should have time to think a little bit about communication that we're going to make i want to apply this more to the political arenas around the world. And I mean, we all have one, unfortunately, some days, you know, we think we could do without them, but we really can't. Because Mercury is making what supposedly is a nice, comfortable transit towards two planets sitting in Taurus. Now, the reasons why I want to talk about this and I want to direct it towards governments is because it is, to me, Mercury in Capricorn is... Gov it's government feel. Mercury is the planet of communication. Capricorn of rules everything official in our lives, which is big business, government, anything that's sort of official in our lives. And we need to be aware of that. Now, when it's making this lovely trine or gentle aspect, if you want to say, or a positive aspect to the moon, the emotional planet, which will only sit there very briefly in Taurus, but is also holding hands or conjunct Uranus, the planet of the unusual and the unexpected, sitting in Taurus. This is why I believe that we're going to see over the coming couple of days particularly, and it's already started, lots of dribble coming out of politicians' mouths. You know, they're all up there and geeing everybody up and telling everybody how fantastic it is and it's a wonderful time of the year that we can spend time with family and loved ones. And by the way, what an amazing job I've done single-handedly keeping COVID from your doorstep. And, you know, we've kept the economy open and we're getting, you know, reuniting families and we've got the world opening up again and they're all flying in left, right and centre. But at the same time, they're warning you about, you know, the new strain of, of COVID and to be careful and don't forget your mask and don't, you know, don't forget to socially distance. So it's almost like a contradictory message. And this is what, when I started to do the, the prep before the show, it jumped out at me that this is exactly why this is going on. I mean, politicians are a little bit like puppets on strings. If they understood astrology, they'd understand when to open their mouth and when not to and how to how to conduct themselves a little bit better. But no, they all get caught up in the, the, the excitement of the moment of them hearing their own voices and having the cameras on them, I think, and they just get out there and spill this BS coming out of their mouth that they think we're all going to lap up and think they're wonderful. So just be aware of that. Sift through the information that's being told. Yes, it's a good time of the year to be positive, but make sure that you stay safe as well. That's really important. Now, for many people, they will be feeling the effects of the moon conjunct Uranus at the moment. Now, I want to speak about that for a little minute. The moon is the emotional planet. Now, the, the moon moves through a sign every two and a half days. So it only sits in an energy for a very short time compared to other planets that can sit there for years. So with the moon conjunct or holding hands Uranus, is just be aware your emotions might be a little bit scattered. They might be all over the place. One minute you might be on a high and the next minute you might be in the depths of despair and think, where in the hell did that come from? Well, please understand it'll only last for a short time, so don't get too bogged down in it. It's sort of almost the moon realigning our emotional well-being. It's like clearing everything out and sort of getting rid of unwanted emotions and things that we've stored up or kept for later on that we don't need. So the moon's sort of having a little bit of a house cleaning. It's clearing things out with the help of Uranus, with the energy that can be very sudden, very direct and sort of clear the, 
the garbage out of our lives very quickly. So you may even find through this, you're going to get some brain waves there on some emotional issues that might have plagued you for a while. All of a sudden, the answers will be there and they'll be very crystal clear. So let's look at it on a personal level that we're all going to work with the positive sign of Mercury making this lovely trine to the moon and Uranus, that we can have some amazing breakthroughs and have some great conversations and maybe even just sing a few Christmas carols or two to put us in the mood. So we also have Pluto, the planet of transformation, sitting in Capricorn. We've still got quite a bit of emphasis on the Earth sign stuff. So Pluto, the planet of transformation, is actually holding hands with the planet Venus. Last week, Venus was holding hands with Pluto. This week, it's Pluto holding hands with Venus. Now, the reason for that is Venus is moving fairly fast. He will be moving away from Pluto fairly fairly soon. So we have to be aware that Pluto's role here is to completely try and transform any emotional connection that we might have, usually more to do with love. And it's not always to do with serious, committed relationships like marriage. It can sometimes be with relationships that we've had as a sort of a friends with benefits or a, you know, a very vague sort of love affair that it's sort of asking us, what is it we're truly searching for out of this? What are we looking for? What are the boundaries? What are we prepared to accept? For some people, it might be time to say goodbye that, you know, this is really not what I'm looking for. You know, I've been hanging on here for a couple of years with the friends with benefits, hoping it would lead to something more. Well, I've run out of patience. Now it's time to shut the door and move on. So there's many different ways of looking at this. And for those people that are in established relationships, it doesn't mean that there's a breakup coming up. It just means that we might need to sort of readjust our thinking or look at where our priorities are or maybe set some different boundaries. Maybe it's time to look at our relationship in a more grown up term that, you know, relationships do evolve and grow and go through changes and teething problems and adjustments along the way. But that's what makes a good marriage or makes a good solid relationship is the ability to be pliable, to go with the changes that come up. And they can sometimes be external things like changes in job or changes of where we're living or changes in family structures, put different boundaries, different reasons, into our relationships that we need to learn to cope with and redefine new boundaries. So whatever it is that you're doing in this next week, make sure that you take your patience with you when you step out the door, when you're on the phone or you're dealing with somebody over social media, make sure that you smile. It's really important that we put some really positive energy out there so that people can start to understand that it is the most magical time of the year. And we do need to be sparkly and we do need to be upbeat and we do need to be able to to make somebody feel as if they're important to us even if it is only via a text message so we're going to talk with cindy in orangeville in ontario in canada are you there cindy hello <clears throat> i'm here hi cindy do you have a question i can with, please i'm just i would like some clarity about one person in my life <laughs> okay. Just can kind you of just wondering share with me if, that, if that person can you just share with me that person's first initial, please, sweetie. First initial is D. He's what, sweetheart? D. D is the okay. first initial. Okay. So is there a love connection around this this person? Well, there is but that's what i'm curious about <laughs> i feel like it's yeah, supposed to I be. Got this, I, uh, they showed me a pink heart and then they showed me a question mark either side of the pink heart and i thought well that's a different set of symbology i've never seen that one before and i wasn't quite sure how to interpret it that's why i asked whether it was supposed to be a love connection because it was just such a questionable situation look i don't know that they even know themselves what it is they want. So therefore, it's difficult for them to share with you what this is, where it's going or what it's meant to be. Look, I know that that's not really an answer, but I just sort of feel over the next two weeks, I think things are going to become very clear about what this situation is supposed to be. And I do actually feel it's going to head more into what we would term as a traditional love connection you know what i mean we really start to look at this as becoming a proper relationship not a sort of well i don't know what label i put on it you know um i think he's frightened that's what i pick up okay. most of this 
is to do with fear, fear of being hurt, fear of making a mistake. What if I'm wrong? What if this? What if that? Well, let's forget all the what ifs. Let's just go with the moment. Yeah. I know yeah, you're ready sense. to go with the moment. I'm <clears throat> sort of. <laughs> Maybe the fear is on my side too. Well, look, that can be understandable, but I think maybe both of you have got to leave the fear at the front door and let's just see where this can go. I mean, you know, you can always say this is not for me, but if you're going to sit there and play the Mexican standoff, we're never going to get anywhere, are we? Um, excellent analogy. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. And what are you so frightened of? Are you frightened of making a mistake or are you frightened of being in a commitment? What's the issue? Um, we've had sort of a history and that's oh. what I wanted to know is if we're going to go down that road again, is it the right decision to make? Yeah, but if you've got, you know, when you've had a history and you've had a, you know, a connection there before, obviously if the two of you have been brought back together, this is not finished. In some form or another, there's something here that still needs to be resolved. And look, I understand that, you know, going back into a situation where you've had history before, you don't want to go back and make the same choices that you did before because we know those choices led to the two of you parting. So that's obviously not the direction to go. But also we've got to understand that you've both changed, evolved and grown in that time that you were together in the time that you've been apart and you still haven't been able to cut that final cord from each other that maybe you owe it to each other to sort of go back into this with your eyes wide open and say, OK, this time we need to have an approach that's very different. We need to be very bluntly honest with each other. We need to put issues up on the table. If there's an issue, let's talk about it. Let's resolve it. Let's not just pretend it's not happening and let it fester and cause dramas. I actually think, I know you said you've got fear, but I pick up the fear more being from him. Fear of what if this is wrong? And it's almost a fear of losing you completely if it doesn't work this time that that would be it. And I understand that, but you can't just have a half, hearted relationship either you're either all in or you're all out you can't be sitting on the fence this is you know it's not good for either one of you it's holding you up from other areas of your life starting to function Cindy and I'm sure you appreciate that and not just another relationship that could come in it's you know it holds up other things like work opportunities and you know the ability for the you to grow as an individual. So, you know, you two have got to sit down and have some really serious conversations, I think. And, you know, look, if, if it doesn't work this time, well, so be it. You know, you've been, you've done, you've tried, and you've given it your best shot, and then you'd be able to sort of set each other free in a way that you know that you hadn't left any stone unturned. But at the moment, you're in just such a limbo period that nothing's moving, everything's stagnant. So I hope it's, that helps. I think the confusion is just between us. Uh, like we've always known we have a strong bond, we have a connection, but yeah. is it meant to be now like more of a romantic connection, or is it just like we're soul family and we should just leave it at that? That's kind of where we're at, right? You know, with yeah, but I think only you decision. two can sort that out. I think it's meant to be more than just soul friends. I think the two of you really do have a love connection that needs to be resolved. You know, either we get together properly as a couple or we say we've been we've done and it's not for us you know you can't have it you can't have your cake and eat it too that's no good to either one of you yeah if you two decide that a relationship is not what we need and we're just going to stay friends that's fine then you set each other free to be able to repartner with someone else that's the important thing here you can't have it dangling on a string And okay. I know you'll make the right decision, my... Cindy. Hey, okay, sweetie, lovely yeah. to talk to you. We're going to talk with Kari now in Tampa, in Florida, in the USA. Are you there, Kari? Yes, I'm here. Do you have a question I can work with, please, Kari? Yeah, what do you see coming up for my career? Okay. I feel that there's going to be some changes with your career, Kari. Have you been contemplating over the last couple of months that maybe there could be a change early next year because you're ready, you feel ready to sort of embrace something new, something more powerful? Yes. Yeah. Look, I'm not sure that it's with the same company. Look, I, I look at the company that you're with now and I, I know that they're happy with what you 
bring to the table and, you know, you're a good fit as far as they're concerned. My only concern is, is I'm not sure that they've got anything else that they can offer you that's going to give you that get up and go, you know, that reason to get out of bed and be excited to go to work. This is how I'd look at it. If nothing comes up in the first two months of next year with the current company, if you can't see any change there or them talking about anything or the potential of something coming up, then I think you need to start widening your horizons and looking at what's out in the marketplace. Now, sometimes by just doing that and starting that process, it's almost like the, the current employer will, will sense that energy and think, oh, gee, we don't want to lose Kari. We better look at what else we can offer her. You know, we could bring this forward or bring that forward. If they don't do that, then you're not meant to be staying there. What I'm seeing is I really do honestly feel that there'll be a fresh, new, exciting opportunity around early March that will take you away from where you are now, the company that you're with now, into a new new situation with some very motivated people. At first, you're going to feel as if that you've bitten off more than you can chew. The job is very intense. There's a lot to learn. People seem very sort of self-absorbed and very motivated, but very friendly at the same time. And you think, oh, what have I stepped into? But once you get into the groove of this, and it'll take about six or eight weeks, you'll start to feel then that this is actually the right place. It'll fit you like a glove. It's like, yes, there's enough things there to get your teeth into, but there's also enough there that makes you feel incredibly satisfied, that makes you feel that finally, but finally, I'm using all my talents. I'm being given, you know, the rewards and the thank yous for the work that I'm doing, but I've also got plenty of things I can still aspire to to improve. And I think that's the good thing. So I think 2022 is actually going to be quite an exciting year, Kari, on the on the work front. But also, were you planning on sort of looking at purchasing a property next year? Because I keep seeing deeds being sort of flashed in front of me. Yeah, I would property. like to sell this house and move. I just don't know if okay. it's the right time yet. No, I don't think it's the right time yet. I think we need to get the job situation sorted first. But I was seeing deeds to a new property around June, July next year. So it's sort of like, let's get you settled into the job. And then I think you can sort of really address, you know, the putting the place on the market and sort of where you want to go and what's the next step in, you know, the Kari story. But 2022 is a year of action and it's a year of you'll know when it's the time to make the choices and the changes because it will literally nearly drive you mad. You know, the, the, the sensation, the feeling, the drive to do it will be that strong, you can't miss it. So wait for that sort of energy. Don't sort of just because it flashed into your mind today, that might be a good idea. Don't instigate it then. Wait till it really literally drives you mad. Okay. And that's, if you can do that, then I think you'll gain the maximum out of the choices and the changes that you make next year. You know, like they were showing me the new job, a new place to live. I was even seeing sort of the question mark around whether or not to buy a new car. And I don't know that that's necessarily essential or even urgent, but it was just sort of like, oh, I could throw that in the mix too. You know, like, let's have some fun. You know, it's like you're looking yeah. at lots of different things. And that's not a bad thing, Kari, because I feel that you're in a place that you haven't been for a very long time where you feel very comfortable with your decision processes, you feel confident that you can, you know, comfortably pay for any of the changes that you might want in your life. And it's like, well, do I do it now or do I wait? You know, like, it's like I'm in a position of choice. It's not I have to buy a new car because the old one's worn out. It's like, it's, a, right. it's, well, it's more the fact of, well, it's, it's like a treat. You know, oh, I could have a brand new car. Oh, do I really need one? Oh, yes, well, I might treat myself to one anyway. Do you know what I mean? It's not because I have to. There's going to be lots of opportunities yeah. next year for things that you can just sit there and say, well, it's not absolutely necessary, but gee, it'd be nice. I might just do that. So there's going to be some very powerful new friendships coming in next year too. I'm seeing three in particular. That seems to be in the second half of the year. So again, I feel whatever you've been working on or how whatever changes you've made in this last three years, particularly where you have done a lot of work on yourself and you've sorted a lot of things out in your life, you're now going to start to reap the rewards of that. So it's like all those hard yards that you put in and people sort of looked at you strange and you knew you were on the right path, that you knew you had to do it for yourself. Well, it's now starting to pay off and that's good. So is there someone special in your life too, Kari? No. 
Well, I feel there's going to be. I got a nice dark-headed man around April. Okay. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah, look, I don't know whether that's when the actual relationship really blossoms or it's when you first meet him and because things are so busy in your life and his life, it's sort of like we don't really have an opportunity then to see where this can go, but it sort of starts out as a nice friendship. We've had a couple of dates and then I don't think it really ramps up till about July, August, but don't be disappointed about that because you're going to have so much on your plate then at that point in time. It's like, well, he's lovely, but I really don't have the time either. Do you know what I mean? So you're not upset by the fact that you're just, you know, we've been on a couple of dates and we've just got this lovely friendship percolating away in the background because when things sort of settle down for both of you then I think it's full on in and I really like him he's a lovely lovely man he makes you smile he's got a nice energy about him I feel also too he's done a lot of work on himself in the last few years as well and that's you know it's like his reward too is to meet you that you know the two of you are at a very similar spot in your lives and that's good so I think that's going to lead into a very serious committed relationship Kari and it's about time about time you had all your dreams come true, sweetie. Oh my goodness, what a fantastic reading. Um, I, I'd like to ask one really brief question, if I may. Yes, very quickly, sweetie. Yeah, of course, quickly, ma'am. Um, I, I had some trouble with a woman uh, this year, uh, a bit of harassment. Do you feel that she's going to try to come back into my life, or is she... She's going to move no, on. No, it's, it's finished. It's finished. No, no, that's finished. It's They were showing me a very definite, that's finished. That door's closed. So you can sort of, you know, I'm not saying don't be aware of it. I think you still need to be aware for a little bit longer. But no, that issue is completely over with. She's learned her lesson. Really? She had a She's lesson not, to learn? You know, she had a lesson to learn that she can't sort of just come in and disrupt people's lives just to, to give her a bit of entertainment. Because that's all it was to her, was yeah. entertainment. You know, so she's learned yeah. her lesson from that. I think I don't think life's going quite the way she expected it would. Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> no, well, that's called karma. Anyway, Carrie, that's where we've got to leave it. We've come to the end of the show again. So I hope you've had a very exciting week. And this week I want to leave you with a Christmas carol, which is my new favourite and has been for the last couple of years, is my Christmas card to you, which was originally sung by the Partridge family back in the 70s. And David Cassidy sung it at many, many concerts leading into the festive season up until his death. And it is a beautiful song and it's beautifully written. And I think more than anything now, we all need to be looking at a beautiful Christmas card to you. And for those of you that want a little bit of fun, you can Google... Aussie Christmas for a little bit of fun and see how we do it here in Australia in the heat and the flies and 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 we don't have white Christmases here. We have very hot ones at the beach. So until next week, bye for now. Bye.